Hello and welcome to this video about the nervous system, which is a communication system of the body. Please watch this and take notes as you go. You have a file on Blackboard which will allow you to fill in as we move along. The nervous system is divided into two parts. The central nervous system, referred to as the CNS, is particularly the brain and the spinal cord. As you can see on the picture, they're all labeled here for you. Then we have the peripheral nervous system, called the PNS, and the peripheral nervous system are the peripheral nerves through the body. And for example, this means the sensory neurons and your motor neurons. So this allows our senses to work as well as allows us to move. There are three basic functions to the nervous system. If we think about sensory su functions first, um, this is called an afferent system or the afferent system. This allows our sense, this is what we are talking about when we're talking about our senses, the afferent. And one thing that the afferent senses do or the afferent system does is it detects change inside or outside the body. Again, it detects change inside and outside the body. The second thing it does is the messages are sent from the PNS to the control center of the CNS for interpretation. And of course, the part of the CNS that these messages are sent to is in the brain. The integrative or interpretive function occurs in the CNS. And if we are specific here and we look at the different parts of the CNS as to what goes where, the brain itself integrates signals in order to maintain homeostasis. It is also connected with protective meninges. And these are connective tissues, which we talked about earlier. The outer layer of gray matter is called the cerebral cortex. And the fluid, or the cerebrospinal fluid, is circulating in space around the brain, and it protects the brain from injury by absorbing the shock, which is pretty cool. So again, these four, th four things are the things that the brain part of the central nervous system does. They integrate signals in order to maintain homeostasis. They are co it is covered with protective meninges, which is connective tissue. The outer layer of gray matter is called the cerebral cortex. And there is a fluid going around in the space around the brain, which protects from injury by absorbing the shock when you get a light blow to the head. This does not mean that any blow to the head is going to be protected from it, because of course we know that you can have a concussion. The second part of, or the second basic function of the nervous system is, again, continuing with the um, interpretive function, which is also in the CNS, it deals with the spinal cord. And the spinal cord, of course, as we know, is located inside the vertebral column. And there are connections between sensory and motor neurons that occur within the spinal cord. 
The third function is motor functions, and this is the efferent system. The other one, the first one that we looked at, remember, was the afferent. So your sensory functions are the afferent, whereas your motor functions are the efferent. This is where the difference between the A and the E makes a big difference. So the first thing that the motor functions do, or this system does, is that it conveys information from the CNS to muscles and glands. And it is subdivided into two parts. The first part is called the somatic nervous system. This conducts impulses from CNS to skeletal muscle. It is voluntary and under conscious control. In other words, if we want to move our leg, we, we are the ones that control that. And we say, okay, jounce our leg around. The other part of the efferent system is the autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system has these pulses going from the CNS to the smooth mus muscles. By smooth muscles, I mean the intestine, the bladder, the uterus, the cardiac muscle, and glands. This is involuntary. We do not control this. Our body does this on its own, so it can stay within homeostasis. The autonomic nervous system is subdivided into two parts as well. First is the sympathetic system. The sympathetic system is involved in what we call the fight or flight, resulting in sharpened awareness and excitement. And the excitement can be caused by danger. So the fight and flight or fight or flight mechanism, what that is, is when your pupils dilate, your heart rate increases, the blood pressure increases, the dilation of the vessels leading to the muscles, the heart, the lung, all in, is, are larger, so there's dilation there. Um, blood sugar increases, epinephrine like adrenaline is released, and non-essential functions like digestion are inhibited, which means that your body is in a situation where you can decide, am I going to stay here and fight my enemy, or am I going to take flight and run away and probably protect myself? So it stops doing everything that's not necessary to either fight or flight, to take flight. The other part of the autonomic nervous system is the parasympathetic, parasympathetic system. It is involved in relaxation and basic, shall we call them, housekeeping tasks, like digestion. Okay, so those were the three functions of the nervous system. Now let's look at the parts of the nervous system itself. Let's get a little bit more specific than just the central or the peripheral nervous system. We have neurons. Neurons have a unique structure. They are a cell body with many extensions. So again, they are uniquely structured. There are two types of extensions to a nerve cell or to a neuron. One is called the dendrite or dendrites. These are shorter, more numerous. They, along with the cell body, form the receptive ends of neurons. This is where the cell receives signals. We also then have the axons. So again, we have the dendrites up here in the picture. We have the axon, this like leg part here. And axons are found in every neuron, but really there's only one of them. It's a single long, I guess we call it fiber, which can don't which conducts the impulse away from the cell body. Sometimes it is branched, like it is in this picture down here at the bottom. We also have this myelin sheath over the center of the axon. The axon is coated with bundles of protein called myelin. Myelin helps neurons send signals faster. If there's something wrong with the dendrite, then the cell can't receive the signal there, in which case the, the 
part of the body that it's attached to is not going to know what to do. Similarly, if the axons get broken, then that impulse that comes in is not going to be able to go away. However, if all of those are working correctly, but there's a problem with the myelin sheath, then the issue becomes the reaction occurs, the jumping of signals at to the different parts of the muscles occur, but at a slower and slower rate. This is getting rid of the myelin sheath is not something that you want to happen. There are some genetic diseases that cause the myelin sheath to be worn away or to not form properly. And when this occurs, there's a lot of issues that the person ends up having, most of them dealing with muscle control. And eventually they lose control of their muscles completely because they can't, they don't have a myelin sheath to get the signal to go through faster. And so it ends up getting stuck along the way. Next, we have this thing called action potential. Action potential is an electrical pulse within a neuron. So the potential is the word that we use when we're talking about electricity. So this is an action potential. This means that the neuron is being given an electrical signal to cause an action to occur. Um, the action potential is how a signal gets from the dendrites down to the axon. If a neuron receives a strong enough signal at its dendrites, it will send an action potential down its axon. The signal can travel 150 meters per second. The signal must be strong enough for this to occur. And I use the phrase strong enough because part of that is dependent on who you are. Some people it doesn't take a lot to have a reaction, other people it takes an awful lot. So the signal must be strong enough for this to occur, but it can travel, as I said, 150 meters per second. That's from the spinal cord to your toe in less than seven one thousandths of a second. That's amazing. In non-fraction terms, seven one thousandths of a second is seven milliseconds. And the way that this occurs and how this action potential works is that it is caused by a wave of potassium, oh sorry, it is caused by a wave of sodium that enters the cell very quickly, followed by potassium leaving. So remember, the action potential is what allows us to react to things, and it is the signal itself that's going through from the dendrites to the axons. It travels super, super fast, and it's sodium, it's salts. It's, a, it's sodium going in, potassium leaving, which is disrupting the amount of salts you have in your neuron, which is why it's a, causing a reaction to occur. Okay, so what happens when an action potential arrives at the end of a neuron? There are seven things that happen. I'm going to talk about them first, and then we'll look at a picture that explains those seven things better. So, the first thing that happens, number one, an action potential arrives at the end of the axon of a presynaptic cell. The presynaptic cell releases chemicals known as neurotransmitters into the synapse the neurotransmitters go across the synapse. They are then received by the postsynaptic cell. The neurotransmitters cause an action potential in the postsynaptic cell. The presynaptic cell takes back the neurotransmitter to use it again. Certain drugs can block that uptake, resulting in a continued excitement or action potentials of the postsynaptic cell. So in other words, some drugs can cause number six to not occur. Which means that the postsynaptic cell is always excited.
there's always an action potential there, which of course is a problem because then um, the cell can't work properly. So for example, if we take a look here at this picture, we have our presynaptic neuron over here on the left at the top. We have the axon with a neural signal. The neural signal goes down the axon into the dendrites of the postsynaptic neuron. They do that with synapses. Okay, these synapses here are the tiny little spaces between the axon and the dendrites of the next cells. Notice the nucleus is in the center. The neuron then connects the, gets the action potential through and continues the signal on to wherever it needs to go next. So right there, if we zoom in on these synapses parts down here on the left, where we have the presynaptic neuron on the left on the bottom, we have a neural signal, signal coming down. The neural transmitters are being sent out here and they are going to the postsynaptic neuron over here. And each neural transmitter fits nicely into its adjacent uh, postsynaptic neuron or its receptor. And then once it's all used, then it goes right back by way of another receptor there. However, if you take drugs or um, illegal ones or some legal ones as well, if you take cocaine, for example, cocaine molecules get in and they block the part of your presynaptic neuron and all of these action potentials are constantly being fed to the postsynaptic neuron. And the postsynaptic neuron is then saying, oh, it's, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. So it stays in that fight or flight excitement state for a long time. That is not healthy, of course. It causes your blood pressure to go up, it causes your heartbeat to go up, it causes pupil dilation, all of those things. When eventually the cocaine is used up from your system, and when this cocaine eventually goes away, and you don't use it anymore, then all of these neuron transmitters have to go back. And in going back, suddenly that huge excitement that the postsynaptic neuron was feeling is crashed, it stopped. And that's when you have withdrawal symptoms. And that can be nasty, especially from drugs like cocaine, because it's, it's stopping the chemical reactions that should be happening in your neurons to allow your body to function properly. And then it's a continual buildup of those until suddenly they're not there anymore. This concludes our video about the nervous system. I hope you got all the information from it. And this is the last thing we're doing for the week. Bye for now.